when you cross that finish line and you realize it's done, everything just comes out. What you know, Manuela's done is phenomenal. She realized what it needs to be a real elite athlete. And I still think I can get faster. I got injured in 1993, so when I get injured, they brought me to a hospital where they tried to find out what the problem was, and as soon as they found out it was a back injury, they, they sent me here. That's also where I got surgery and where I stayed for the next six months for rehabilitation. Also, the first time was sicher a Schüler in their normal Rollstuhl. And the Ivo, also the brother, had sie mit seinem Velo begleitet. They gave me the chance to, to try different sports. Um, I, played, I tried basketball, I tried tennis and also wheelchair racing and that was my favorite. Also, mich hat es einfach von Anfang an gedacht, dass sie sicher ein Talent ist. Das hat man gesehen, schon bei den ersten Rennen ist sie eigentlich schon immer davor, sie ist immer davor gewesen, oder? As far as I remember, I met her the first time in my first competition ever. So when I was uh, 10 years old, I uh, competed in a junior's race on the road, and so she was uh, also there. The first big moment was when I first uh, sat in, in, in a racing chair. Uh, that was actually in a parking, indoor parking lot, because it was raining outside, and it was a really big, a big racing chair. It didn't fit me at all, so... Um, but that was actually the moment when I, when I thought, wow, that's something I want to do. In 2012 games in London, they were not that successful. And then she was thinking about how could I go on? Should I stop training and end my career? Or if I want to go on, I have to change things. When I was looking for a new coach, I talked to him because I knew he had a big network. He knows a lot of people, so I asked him if he knew someone who would be willing to, to help me out with um, all my training planning and stuff like that. And he's like, well, I could try it. Ended up that I agreed to coach her and that we decided to change the distances. So she came more from the sprint side and we decided we, we do something completely new and try to race marathons. But yeah, that was still far away from the world class, so that had not so thought about und was sie du langsam vor allem auch mit dem Marathon, was sie dort fange mit Marathon fahren und people like sometimes they really want to know how many miles or how many kilometers do you do a year? I don't know that. I don't think it says anything about quality of your training. So Manuela first came on my radio in 2013 at the World Championships in Lyon. Till that point I hadn't even heard of her because she just used to sprint and do the shorter distances. And in Lyon she raced the 1500 and the 5000 and was like, oh, when she medaled, I was like, okay. And then she was doing the marathon and her name down was on the marathon. And I remember hearing the Americans saying, I think we've got this race between us. And you know, there was Manuela Nev having, I think it was only a second marathon ever, gets on and races and actually I think they were quite shocked that she, she won. So it was like, okay, there's a new woman on the block and this is exciting. I didn't feel a lot of pressure back then because I really wanted to see how, how it all goes and it was actually really surprising how well it went. When I moved, um, moved here, I expected to move to a way more private area because nobody knows me here and it's bigger. 
but that's not the case. They really follow sports a lot. When I came home from uh, Rio, I, no, Leo, the World Championships, like right down there in the corner, maybe you just, just, you still saw my name. It was actually a big picture of my face. <laughs> when I drove home, I was like, oh, it's me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's amazing. In 2016, Abbott World Marathon Majors added the wheelchair series to the majors. It was a huge step to do that. It was a big thing for the wheelchair racers. They were part of a series. There was money involved for them to win the series. And I think it elevated the whole of wheelchair road racing. In the series, there are a few uh, key competitors like uh, Tatiana McFadden, who, who's been dominant for so many years and who has pushed our sport to a whole new level or Susanna Scaroni who's working really, really hard and um, she's going to be uh, so strong in the marathon or Madison De Rosario who has already won uh, London Marathon. You know, from 2014, Tatiana McFadden just dominated the marathon majors and it was kind of interesting watching Manuela because from, you know, in 2016, throughout the whole series of 2016, she was always second. I think the first two years maybe, I was really, really pleased and really happy with my second place, actually. After a while, I started to think, hmm, it would be really nice to actually win one. And then we started the 2017 series. London 2017 was a week after Boston. She just won Boston. She came in with lots of confidence and she won that race as well. Tatiana didn't come to that race but Manuela won that race and she won it convincingly. She then, we go off to Berlin to start the Autumn Series. She had a good race there. She won that race and then she went to Chicago. Tatiana turned up in Chicago in quite a good condition and won that race. And I think Manuela just kind of like felt, what do I have to do to win Chicago? What can I do to win Chicago? She was getting faster and faster and, and I was looking at the testing and, and she made more progress than you can expect during this time and, and so you, you can be confident that some days it happens. My coach really loves numbers, so he has a number for everything or a number to describe any situation and I'm totally different. So I think after Berlin, 2017, he asked me about uh, my speed or my average speed and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, well, I don't even know because I don't have time to actually look at my, my speed. So he's like, well, let's take it off for, for Chicago. Do you need it? I'm like, no, I don't think so. So we tried that and we never put it back on. She has a really good perception of, of what's going on. And if you, if you take this and you listen to your body, you cannot look at the speed. You have to know, can I raise this pace for another 10 minutes or 20 minutes or so. And that's what we tried to do um, with this. And since then she speeds without and, and it works. I started to depend on my feeling. And usually when you're racing, you're able to go over that limit that you have in training. So yeah, I feel stronger without it you have to actually learn that. And when you have a number, you depend on that number. But I want to depend on my feeling and I want to know exactly how it feels when, when it's too fast or too long. So that's a process and I think, yeah, you have to learn to suffer and you have to learn how that feels. We then head to New York. And New York 2017 for me was one of the most interesting races I think I've ever watched in terms of the women's wheelchair racing. Coming into New York 2017 I knew to win that race I would have to beat Tatiana who has won New York City Marathon for five years in a row I think. Tatiana McFadden is probably one of the best hill climbers out there in terms of the women. In fact is the best hill climber. New York starts with a hill and she pulled away immediately. I had a plan at the start line and it went out the window pretty, pretty fast because something told me to just try to attack really early in the race 
And I kept doing that and then suddenly I, I saw that I was able to get away a little bit. So I just kept trying and trying and trying. You almost could see her thinking, I've got to go for it now. And she just tactically put everything into it and caught Tatiana up and then just took her. Ja, unbeschreiblich. Das hat die eigentlich fast verrissen. Als sie gesehen hast, kam. Eigentlich unbeschreiblich. Also von Anfang bis zum Schluss spannend pur. Und es hat auch uns sonst sehr gut gefallen. Für uns war das wirklich etwas Spezielles. Gewesen. Etwas Einmaliges. Wenn du New York gewinnen kannst, ist es fast wie wenn du auf jedem Kurs gewinnen könntest. Und ich war wirklich stolz auf das. That I could see that how far I've, I've come. Following New York, we then again have a break and then we head into Tokyo. She wins Tokyo. She had won the series, and I think for her it was a big thing. It was a, a great thing. So we, we start the new series in 2018 in Berlin. Perfect conditions, beautiful day, and it's looking strong, it's looking fast. I was in the men's lead vehicle, and I was like looking and tracking and looking at the time, and I thought, wow, this is gonna be really close to the world record time. I always said that Berlin is a really, really fast course for us. It's nice roads, uh, we have a lot of space, flat, yeah, I really went for a fast time, but I had no idea that I was on world record course. And she just pulls away, that same gut instinct just pulls away, comes in across the line, and I look at the time and I think, that's a world record. She started the series on the front foot, you know. She's outside of that by a number of minutes but it's stunning. She's coming into the finish line. She is all by herself. Today, Manuela Char goes side by side with some of the men and in fact passes many of them. What a contrast to yes. the men's race. Yes. Boy, yes. cruising yes. on. Dominant. Yes. Nobody, nobody around her. What you know, Manuela's done is phenomenal. Is is something different. Is something that none of, not even the men have managed that. Not even the male racers have managed to win all six races in one season. Winning all six races is incredible. Or I describe it always like a puzzle. Uh, so many pieces should fit together to be on that level. I think that's a very big achievement. It's very impressive. I'm really proud to see her winning, and of course, but uh, most of the success is it's her. That's her personality, that's her success, and, and I think she, has, she does it really well because she, she realized what it needs to be a real elite athlete, and that's something she really lives 100%. It took me so long to, to realize what, uh, what, what had happened the past 12 months because it's been so emotional and it's been tough too because it's a lot of racing, a lot of preparation for each marathon and it took me a while to find that inner peace again and to calm down and to really, really enjoy that feeling because it was a big achievement for me, it still is and nobody can ever take that away from me. No thoughts of stopping anytime soon? Not tomorrow. Ha, 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 ha.